Hey, so you just got your new Looker Studio dashboard. You're excited and you want to see what it can do. But before you do that, I want to show you all the little widgets that uh, you might encounter in your dashboard just to make sure that you get the maximum out of your dashboard. All right, so I'll try to do that in less than 10 to 12 minutes. So let's get to it. First, we're going to make this a little bit bigger. All right. Top right over here, you're going to find a date picker. If you click on it, you'll see the date range that is currently selected. So from March 1st, 2023 to March 31st. All right. Left section here, start date. This is where you select the start date and date to the right. If you click to the top right here, the drop down menu, you'll see a bunch of preset last seven days, last 30 days, even this month to date. So I'm going to select that one. And today is October 10. So as you can see, it's only selecting from October 1st to October 9. This is because we haven't checked the include today box. If we do, it's going to include today, today's data. However, if your dashboard only refresh once, um, once a day, I would recommend not including today because you might not get any data or it might just be in complete data. So I normally leave that unchecked unless your dashboard is real time. Then obviously uh, if it's real time and you need today's data, um, you want to include that. All right. To use the, to go from month to month, you can click those arrows. If you want to select a month without having to click so too many times, you can click on the month and you'll see all of the months. Same thing for the years, right? So you can click on the years and select the year, year you're interested, the month, and then the date. You click apply and that will be the date range selected for this page. All right, so that's it for the date picker. Let's move to the filters. So at the top of your most of the reports, you'll see a bunch of drop down menu. Those are filters that will filter the, um, the whole page of your report, like um, based on what you've selected. So if we, for example, look at session source, these are all the possible session source. And the way you can select these, let's say you just want to see direct, uh, a, a quick way would be to click on only. Right, so this would only show you the data where session source equals direct. Right, we can click on that white box here to select everything or deselect everything. One thing you can do, let's say everything is selected, you'll you'll notice here that um, Facebook sometimes generates multiple session source. So medium, uh, so so yeah. So you have this type to search bar here. You have a search bar. And this is not case sensitive. So let me show you what I mean. If I deselect everything and I want to select all session source that contains Facebook, I could type Facebook here, even if with the capital F and it would show, show me all of these Facebook session source. I can now select everything, click out of it. And this dashboard now is only show um, where session source basically contains Facebook. Right. Um, one other thing you could, let's do that again. Let's say I select Facebook and I, I want to add another one. I can X out of that and now select the other one that I'm interested in. All right. Let's say you've selected a bunch of these and now you're kind of confused about all the filters you've, um, you've clicked on. You can, if you're in view mode, you'll see this reset icon here. Just click on it and it will reset the dashboard to its um, default state. All right, so we'll go back here to actual size and let's move on to the comparison metrics. So this, these are the comparison metrics and the way they work, they have multiple ways, but if you got your dashboard from me, by default, I tend to use previous period, right? So this is dynamic. It always compare against the previous period. So for example, 
your date range is from March 1st to March 15. The comparison metric, what it will do, it will compare against the previous 15 days of that, right? So 15 days before that, it would probably be something like, um, right, so this would be what it's comparing against, right, 15 days. However, if, for example, you have this month to date selected, and it's looking at October 1st to October 9, then what it's gonna do, it's compare, it's gonna compare against September from September 1st to September 9. All right, so when you have a preset, last 30 days will compare against the previous 30 days. Last week will compare against the week before that. This month to date will compare against the same so if, if today is October 10 and we not, we're not including today, it's gonna compare against last month um, for that same date range from the first to the ninth, right? Uh, so this is dynamic. There's also other preset. We can also compare it to previous year or even compare against the fixed period. But if you got your dashboard from me, I tend to use the previous period um, which is a dynamic filter. So if we change the date range, it's gonna compare against a different period. And this is very important to understand because most of the time we're not that interested in the numbers, but more in the trends, right? The improvement. Are we doing better than last month? Are we going in the right direction? So this is the comparison metrics. The delta over here in a table this is essentially the same thing. This is just a comparison matrix. And again, this is dynamic, right? So it works exactly the same way. So if you see that in your dashboard, um, this is the same thing. All right, now let's get to the dimension selector. So you have this table over here and column number one has dimension number one and column number two is secondary dimension. This allows you to break down the table into many combination, right? So for example, over here, it shows session source and session campaign as a secondary dimension. But let's say we'd like to see session medium as a secondary dimension. All you have to do is go over here, select session medium, click out of it. And as you can see, it switched to session medium. And now um, that's what you have in column number two. If, for example, you're not interested in seeing a secondary dimension, you can either select the exact same one that you have in column one. So if you have session source, session source, um, it's basically like you don't have anything in this secondary dimension or select this one over here. And it's, again, just be like you, you only have this dimension in the first column. So that's about the dimension selectors. All right, uh, now we'll move on to the optional metrics. Oops. So if we look at some charts or a table, you might see this icon over here. If you hover over it, you'll see it's written optional metrics. When you click on it, you're gonna be presented with one more or multiple other metrics that you could include in that chart. So if I select that, we'll see both sessions and uh, engaged sessions, or I could deselect sessions and just see um, engaged sessions. So again, this is great if you don't wanna have like a ton of different charts and you'd like to have one chart that could display any combination that you'd want. You'll see that on charts or tables, right? Over here, let's say we have sessions, engaged session, engagement rate, um, let's say we're not interested in engaged session. We just want to see that, um, we can do that as well. So this is about, this is all optional metrics. And that's why I include this two KPIs here, uh, just to kind of draw your attention to that little box. All right. Um, 
you also can sort so in tables and even um, bar charts so if you click on on that here now it's it's showing highest to lowest but if um, if I click here now it's lowest to highest and you can do that for every metric even um, for dimensions as well there's another way here if you pick those three dots you can then go to sort by and change how you'd like this table to be sorted all right you'll see the same thing here a to z but it does the same thing uh, it's just a way to sort the data another very useful widget again if you click those three little dots you you spend some time customizing the table the way you want it but now you'd like to export that data to um to spreadsheet for deeper analysis so what you do is you click on those three dots click export and now you'll be presented with the option to export at csv or google sheets and to keep the value formatting or not most of the time you want to keep it off what it does is if you check it, that box for example engagement rate is a percentage if you check that box it's going to be exported as exactly the way it is shown here it's going to be a text so you won't be able to manipulate the data as a like number in your spreadsheet right if you keep that off then it's going to be exported as a number and then you'll be able to do all sorts of calculation and so most of the time um, I would keep that off all right now let's move down to drill up or down sometimes on bar charts you might see um, those up and down arrows if you hover over them it will tell you to what it's going to be drilling up or down in this case it's going to drill down from device operating system which is what it's displayed right now to the device operating system version all right so if we drill down you'll see all of the version now we're gonna there's this little option here to just reset the filter you've we've set at the chart level so this wouldn't reset the whole page this would just reset this chart we're going to click on it and a much better way to use this is to start by clicking on the bar we're interested in so let's say we want to see ios if we click on that the whole dashboard is now going to be filtered only for sessions using ios and now if we drill down now we'll see all of the ios version um, breakdown which is pretty cool same thing for city states for example um, if I was to click on Texas over here drill down again we'd see um, the breakdown like that all right so that's about the drill up and down and finally we have the metric slider so this is not as common but it has its use so we look at this table here again it shows session source session um, secondary dimens di dimension to session campaign and it's sorted by conversion rate the highest to lowest but it's not very useful like we see this hundred percent here uh, and the reason for that is like there was one session one purchase we get a hundred percent we'd like to see it sorted yes by conversion rate but only where we have at least a thousand sessions so we have a decent sample size um, to work with so we're going to click on this icon over here the metric sliders and what it does it it allows you to set a range for every metrics that exists inside that table all right so we said we wanted to a thousand so sometimes it's a bit difficult to get the number you want you can type right so we're going to type in 1000 and we're going to leave that one um, as is and we'd like to only see when there's one at least one purchase right so there you go it's still sorted by purchase rate but now we have at 
only it's only gonna show these sessions where where we have at least a thousand sessions. Um, so yeah, that's about it. I hope this helps you get the maximum of, out of your dashboard. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, that's it for now. All right, cheers. See ya.